I have a circuit and Tabata workout for you today. This is the full length original version. So it's gonna be a strength circuit, a Tabata, a second strength circuit, a second Tabata. We finish up with a little burpee challenge, okay? We'll start class with a guided warm up. finish with a guided cool down. First half of class is gonna be more upper body and core focus. Second half of class will be more lower body focused. For the circuits, I give you four to five exercises. You do them each for 45 seconds with 15 seconds of rest in between, and you go through them either three or four times, depending on how many exercises I give you. It will vary circuit one to circuit two. For the Tabatas, I give you two exercises and you alternate between them using an interval structure, 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest, eight times. In between each chunk of class, you get a full minute to recover. And during that time, I'll give you a preview of the upcoming exercises. Anytime we mix in jumping, I'll have a low impact modificate modification playing on the screen. Um, other ways to modify, go lighter with your weights, go lighter with your bands, or ditch the band altogether. So that brings me to equipment. You're going to need a set of medium weights, whatever medium is for you. I'm gonna use a set of 10 pound weights, and then you're going to want a resistance band loop. If you have a set with different weights, have them all on hand. Um, it's nice to have a lighter one when we get to the upper body work and a heavier one for the end of class when we have it around our thighs. So I just have all four there and we'll see which ones I go for. Um, what else? I think that's it. I think we can get into our warm up now. We're gonna start standing. I want you to reach your arms forward, unlock through the knees, tall through the spine. Your hands are shoulders distance apart and they're gonna stay shoulders distance apart as we just retract and protract the shoulder blades. So kind of picture you're holding the ends of a paper towel roll. I want you to keep your hands equidistant as the movement comes from the shoulder blade. So just to show you from the back, my scapula are gliding in towards each other and then they're gliding wide kind of towards my armpits. Gliding them in and out as the arms slide back and forward accordingly. Now, as they slide back, we're not flaring open through the front of our ribs, so we don't change the shape of our spine. We just let the scapula glide across the back. Now, we're gonna add on to this. So you're gonna retract, and then you're gonna fly your arms wide. We're gonna protract, and then you're gonna round forward through the mid back. So we come up tall and retract. The arms fly out and forward. We protract then round through the mid spine. Keep moving through like that. The movement always starts with the shoulder blades so that, okay? Scapula, then round. Ooh, scapula, then fly. Ooh, let's do one more. Ooh, round it forward. Bring it up tall, and now I want the arms to reach overhead, and we're gonna do a hip hinge with an arm sweep. So the hips slide back as the arms swing back. Come up tall. We'll hold the hinge position in four, three, two, one. Hold the hinge position, hands can come to heart center, and we're gonna bend and stretch through the knees. Now we're gonna play around with intention and building traction through our legs to switch the emphasis of this movement. So I want you to First, plant down through the feet and picture you could separate the mat, okay? So we're pushing out with the feet. Now, as you do that bend and press, you should feel outer line of leg, outer hips, fire up. Now, coming up, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna draw the feet in towards each other. They don't actually move, we're just creating tension. So pause and now pull the whole inner line of the leg in. Go back to the pulse. So now you should feel more adductor. So visibly, we don't really see a change. There's not a position change. We're just changing the intention. I want you to pause. Let's do it one more time each side. Push those feet out as if you could widen the mat. Pulse. And let's get inner line one more time. Pause, draw in, and go. So when you draw in, you don't knock knees. The knees don't pull in like that. It's the whole line. Give me three, two, one, find a forward fold. Now I want you to separate your feet a little bit and we're just gonna move between this forward fold into a low squat. Hands to the mat, lift the hips. Bend the knees, elongate the spine, lift your chest. One more time. Squat, forward fold, and then from your forward fold, legs straight, 
We're going to inchworm out to a plank and we're going to do world's greatest. So from your plank position, one foot steps outside the hand. We twist it open and we're going to bring it over to the other side. Keep alternating. One more time each side. And when you're back in your plank, we pike the hips up. We inch from our hands in towards our feet and vertebrae, 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 we roll it up to stand. We're gonna come to some more dynamic movement. Now we're gonna start with a squat to a hip circle. So you're gonna squat it down, cross midline, step it wide into your squat, other side. Second move. We'll find a wide stance, side lunge, reach and twist. Give me one more hip circle. And then nice wide stance. You're gonna side lunge to one side, opposite hand towards that foot, slide it across. We'll pivot over to the right in a lunge position. Arms will reach overhead for a knee drive. In three, two, one, pivot it over to the right. Arms overhead, left knee draws in and out. As we stay in that semi lunge on the right, give me eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's start from the top, squat to hip circle. So we're gonna just go through those one more time and it's into our first circuit. Again, that first circuit has an upper body core focus. One more hip circle and then step those feet wide, side lunge, slide it across, reach and twist. This time we'll pivot over to the left for those knee drives. In three, two, one, pivot it over to the left, arms overhead, drive the right knee in and out. Building a little heat here, elevating that heart rate for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, now here's a preview of circuit number one. So we're gonna start down on the mat, band around our arches. We have our weights. It's going to be a shoulder press in a V-sit position. And then we're gonna bicycle crunch the legs, pushing out against the band as we rotate the torso. Press, rotate other way. Second exercise, weights go down, but we keep the band around our arches. It's going to be a banded teaser roll up with a single arm row at the top. And you just alternate which arm does the row when you're at the top. We're then gonna to come to stand. We have a band around our forearms. It's gonna be a bent raise. We're gonna reach those arms forward, little reverse fly pulse, row it back, lower down. From there, we ditch the band, we grab the weights. We're gonna do some bicep and shoulder work. We're gonna start with a bicep curl to a shoulder press up, keeping the palms facing in towards you. So you press up right in front of your face. And then the final exercise is going to be hammer curls. One arm holds the hammer curl in isolation. Will you give me two curls on the other side, then that arm holds the isolation. You give me two on the other side. Okay, so we are gonna go through this circuit three times. 45 seconds in exercise, 15 seconds stress in between. Let's do it. So I'm gonna use my light band. I'm gonna put it around my arches. We're gonna to come to a V-sit position. We're gonna grab those weights. So you wanna balance just behind your sitting bones, lean back a little bit, and we'll bring those feet up to a hover. You want some tension on the band so they're not together, they're apart a little bit. So it's gonna be a overhead press, and then you're gonna rotate as the opposite leg kicks forward. Press, other side. So you rotate towards the bent knee, like a bicycle crunch. Okay, drop the heels for a second to give those hip flexors some relief. Weights go down. We're gonna come back into that visa, but we're gonna have straight legs. Now I want your legs together for this. You're gonna straighten out the legs. We're gonna do a teaser roll up. So vertebrae by vertebrae, you roll to an ab curl position. You roll it back up. One arm does a high row. You roll it down. You roll it up. Other elbow goes wide and back. So you're articulating the spine down to your ab curl articulating the spine back up tall. So at the bottom, you're looking at your knees, 
head, neck, and upper shoulders are not on the ground. And then as you roll to the top, I want you to think elongate through the spine. Okay, we're going to come to stand. I'm going to switch to my lightest band. We're going to put it around our forearms. Whoops, going to be a bent raise. We'll slide those arms forward. I'm getting started before the 15 seconds rest is up just so that you have a demo of what we're doing, but join in at the beeps. Bent raise, reach it forward as you do. You rotate the palms in, little reverse fly pulse. Row the elbows as you rotate palms to the floor, lower the elbows. When you do that row, really think of retracting the shoulder blades like we did in our warm up. They glide in towards each other. Okay, ditch the band. So now we're gonna use the weights for the final two. We're gonna start with a bicep curl to a shoulder press up. So start standing, neutral, unlock through the knees, active through the core. You curl up and then keeping the palms facing in towards you, forearms parallel, press those weights up in front and then lower. You curl, press up. So when you do the press up, you don't have to get your elbows all the way locked out straight. If that's causing you to flare your ribs, just come up to the point that you can maintain neutral. So it may just be a little pulse. And you always have the option of taking a staggered stance if you find yourself swaying and dumping into your lower back. So you would just take the ball of one foot and kind of plant it like a little kickstand behind the other. Rest. Okay, so we're still going to do bicep work. Hammer curls though, so the palms face in towards midline the whole time. You're going to find 90 degrees. You're going to give me two curls on one arm. You're going to come up to 90. Now hold on that side, two curls on the other. If holding at 90 gets to be too much, then just do two curls on one side, two curls on the other, having the other one down at your side like that, okay? Whew, this one's tough. Oh, rest, take 30. Okay, so we're gonna start from the top. We come down to the mat, band around the arches. First round done, two more to go. We'll grab those weights, press, bicycle crunch. So you want tension on the band, so your feet are gonna be about hips distance apart in the balance. So let's go. Exhale as you press, stabilize, twist. Okay, weights go down. Now we're gonna do that teaser roll up. So your legs can come together for this. And they're going to come straight up. We roll it down. Again, I'm starting a little early in case you want a visual, but you can take the full 15 seconds to rest. 
or if you're ready to go into the next move, get right into the next one. If this is too much with your legs straight, I want you to do it with your knees bent, okay? So when you come to the top, think open through the chest, tall through the spine. Rest. Okay, come up to stand. I'm going to drop to my lightest band. We got that shoulder work. Bent raise, reach forward, reverse fly, pulse, reverse it. So I like the band just like an inch above the wrist. Elbows start at 90. Bent raise, reach it forward, reverse fly, pulse. So a nice mix of banded and weighted work today throughout class. Triceps don't get a lot of love in this circuit, but we will get them when we get to our Tabata. Woo, okay, so now we're gonna grab the weights for our final two exercises. We're gonna start with that bicep curl to the press up in front. Open through the chest, tall through the spine, level through the pelvis. Take the staggered stance if you need to. You're gonna curl, press up, lower down. Rest. Okay, we got that hammer curl work. I'm taking these 15 seconds to rest. I don't want to do any more than 45 seconds of these. <laughs> so we still have that neutral posture. Palms face into midline. We'll find the 90 degree bend. One will do two curls while the other holds the isometric. And then we'll take it over to the other side. Stay open across your chest. What tends to happen is sometimes we want to throw the shoulder heads forward. Stay open. Oh, rest. Take 30. All right, we're going through that one final time. We got this. Come down to the mat. We'll grab that band. I'm just going to make sure I still have enough time on my camera. I do, barely, but it'll do. <laughs> this I'm using my old camera today I have a newer one that's better but my old camera will only film 20 minutes at a time so after 20 minutes it shuts off and I just have to pause what I'm doing go hit start again and then come back and try to get into the same position and start moving it's a pain but oh well <laughs> so band around arches we're going to grab the weights press twist and bicycle let's go so sometimes when I do these classes, I like to do the lower body portion first, and then the second half of class is upper body and core focused. But sometimes I like to switch it up, and I think it is nice really firing up the core towards the start of the workout. It just makes you more aware of core engagement as we go through all the subsequent exercises. Because really, every exercise is a core exercise. Even when you're into legs, so kind of building that burn 
through your core at the start. I just find it helps us stay aware of that. Whew, okay, weights go down. We're gonna do that teaser roll up. If you need to butterfly the knees for a second to relieve the hip flexors, do it. I know two hip flexor endurance exercises in a row can be tough. Straighten out those legs. We'll articulate it down. We'll roll it up and elongate. Row, you're alternating which arm rows every time you're at the top. Rest, come to stand. All right, we're gonna grab that band around our forearms. Bent raise, reach it forward, a little reverse fly pulse. So take your shoulders, roll them up down and back, not flaring open through the ribs. Let's go. Now, yes, this is a shoulder exercise, but let's make sure you're not scrunching your shoulders up to your ears and holding all this tension in your neck. Rest. Okay, done with the bands for this circuit. We'll grab our weights, shoulders and biceps. We'll start with that curl of the press up. So this curl, it's a rotate, palms face you at the top. Press it up. If you tend to lock out through the knees and dump forward with your pelvis, make sure there's a little softness to those knees, okay? Rest. Okay, we got those hammer curls. Final 45 seconds of work in this first circuit. You got it. Palms face into midline the whole time on these. Let's go find that 90 degree hold. Two curls on one arm, then you take it over to the other side. Keep going. Oh, and rest. Okay, I have a minute to recover. I'm gonna show you a preview of our first Tabata. No equipment needed for our Tabata. This Tabata, again, it's going to be upper body and core focus, a little more total body though. So first it's going to be crab kicks. So in a reverse tabletop position, you're giving me little tricep dips as you kick one leg and then the other. To modify that one, you can just slow it down and march instead of kind of jumping side to side. You could also have your bum on the ground and just do the tricep dips from there. I'll have that modification playing. Second exercise is gonna be a rolling like a ball to a squat jump. To modify that one, two options. You could just do squat jumps, or if you wanna stick with the more core focus, you're gonna do rolling like a ball to a V-sit, rolling like a ball, straighten the legs, and I'll have that modification playing. 20 on, 10 off, eight times, let's do it. 
Okay, so lots of options for these crab kicks. Um, if the kicks are too much, just do the tricep dips. I want you to spread out through your hands. They're gonna be under your shoulders, fingers pointing forward. Plant your feet down and lift your bum to a little hover, okay? So it's gonna be tricep dips as one leg kicks and then the other. Really press them out away. Go, kick, switch. Little pulse, pulse. Your elbows are going straight back, so creases of the elbows point forward. Kick, kick. You can always slow it down, give me more of a march. Rest. Okay, rolling like a ball to squat jump. So when you roll back, don't roll onto your neck and head. It's just upper shoulders, okay? Let's go. Inhale it back. Exhale it forward. Squat jump. Roll up on the exhale. Okay, back to those triceps. When you do the tricep dip, it's not your shoulders going forward, it's your elbows bending back. Let's go. If you take out the kicks, you can give me just the tricep dips. And instead of having your bum at a hover, you could also always do it with your bum on the ground, which is what I'm demoing rest. All right, rolling like a ball. So we kind of round the spine into a C shape. Inhale, we roll back to the shoulders, not the neck. Let's go, inhale it back, exhale to come forward, squat jump. If hip mobility isn't quite there to get from the floor up to your feet, then just start practicing the rolling like a ball, like I'm demoing. Rest. Ooh, okay, halfway there. Again, so important on this one that spread out through the hands. You're not rolling the shoulders forward. Think elbows bend back. Let's go. So the creases of your elbows point forward. Rest, okay, rolling like a ball to that squat jump. Let's go. So when you do the rolling like a ball, you're not kicking your shins. You're using your core and some momentum coming out of that squat for sure to create the rolling motion. Don't kick the legs. Rest. All right, final set. Bum to a hover. And we go. Rest. Okay, rolling like a ball of squat jump. Final 20 seconds. Gaze at your knees. All right, you have a minute to recover. I'm gonna show you our second circuit, which is lower body focused. Just four exercises in the circuit, but we go through it four times instead of three. First up, we're gonna have the band around our feet and in a semi lunge position, it is going to be a sweep of the leg, keeping it straight and at a hover out to the side and back in. You'll probably wanna put your hand on something for support, a couch, a chair, a wall, something like that, just FYI. From there, we're gonna keep the band around our arches and it's gonna be a squat to a knee drive, squat to an abduction, squat, knee drive, squat, straight leg abduction. From there, we ditch the band. It's going to be a single leg deadlift to a knee drive, step to a side lunge, knee drive. So we'll slow down the pace a little bit, focus in on balance on that one. Final exercise, we rack the weights to our shoulders. From a low lunge position, you step to a curtsy, curtsy kick sweep. 
back to the lunge, curtsy, kick sweep. You can always knee drive instead of doing the kick sweep. All right, 45 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest. Let's do it. You wanna be able to get a decent range of motion, so don't go too heavy with the band. I'm gonna start with my light band. Let's have our right leg as our support side to start. So I'm going to put the band around the lower shin on my right side and then around the arch of my left foot. So we're gonna find a semi-lunge position. Our right leg is going to be, or sorry, our left leg is gonna be at a hover. Our right foot is gonna be planted down. Send the hips back, hinging forward with the torso. Again, you can have your hand on something. You could do it in a balance, but it's tough in a balance. We're going to take this left leg at a hover long, and then from here, you're gonna sweep it out to the side and then back behind you. Now our pelvis is staying still as we do this. It's just the leg sweeping within the hip joint. It's the left leg that's doing the sweeping, but the right side is stabilizing. You're really gonna feel your hips working on this. Keep sending those hips back. You don't have to have a super deep bend to the knee on this right side, but do think hips back, torso hinging forward. And the left leg doesn't have to be at a high hover, but try to keep it at a hover. If it sweeps across the floor a little bit, that's fine. Equal length through both sides of the waist. So you're gonna probably have to think of constantly pulling this right hip back a little bit. Woo, okay. Now put the band around both arches, okay? Grab those weights. We're going to, again, have the right leg as our support side. So the left leg will be the one marching and abducting. So you squat, mirror me, march, squat, abduct. When you do the abduction, don't crunch into your waist. Think leg and hip joint, not that, okay? Rest. All right, ditch the band. So right leg is still going to be our base leg, our balance. You're gonna keep the weight. That's gonna be a single leg deadlift to a knee drive. And then the left will step out and you'll lunge over to that side, okay? So single leg deadlift, balancing on that right side, come up to a knee drive. Left foot steps out wide, right stays straight, side lunge, knee drive. rest okay last exercise weights come to your shoulders right foot forward left is back in the lunge your left foot is going to step over to the right so you're in a curtsy kick sweep up and out land back in the curtsy and then just a little step to that square lunge curtsy kick sweep curtsy back lunge keep it going You can knee drive instead of doing the straight kick sweep. Rest, okay, take 30 seconds. Okay, so we're gonna start from the top, but on the other side. So we'll grab that band. Left leg will be the base and more of the focus, but that's not to say right side doesn't work. So you wanna put the band around the ankle on your left side and then around the arch on your right. That's gonna hold it in place the best. You can do it in a balance, but I like to have something I can put my hands on 
plant down through that left foot, send your hips back. And then we're going to send the right leg straight and the right leg sweeps up and out to the right and then back behind us. We're holding our hips level as we do this. Equal length through both sides of the waist. So think of pushing that left hip back a little bit in line with the right. Trying to keep the right leg at a hover. If it brushes the floor, no big deal though. If it's too much using the band, do this body weight only. It's still a challenge, surprisingly. Woo, okay, band around both arches. Grab your weights, squat, knee drive, squat abduction. Your left foot stays planted, the right knee will knee drive and abduct. Let's go, squat. Hip flexors, squat, abductors. When you do that abduction, again, think of squeezing into the side of your butt, not crunching into your waist so much. On the squat, knees are not caving inward, so think of them tracking in line with middle of the pinky toes. Rest. Okay, done with the band. So now left leg is going to be the base still. Spread out through that left foot, plant down through it. We'll do the single leg deadlift on the left, and then you step your right out to the side lunge. Open through the chest as you do this. So don't let the weights cause you to round forward. I know coming out of the side lunge back to a knee drive balance is tough. Do it on an exhale, focus on contracting through your left side glutes as you do. Rest. All right, weights come up to your shoulder. We'll find that lunge position. Your left foot will be forward, right will be back. Split lunge, curtsy, kick sweep, curtsy, split lunge. So we find that low position, open through the chest. Step to your curtsy, kick sweep, whoop. Not in a good position. Don't worry about how high up that leg gets on the kick sweep. Rest, woo. All right, we're at the halfway point. Take just a little longer. You get 45 instead of 30. We'll start back from the top. So we're gonna go through that once more. Each side, we got this. Grab our band. All right, so the band will be around right ankle, above the ankle, not right on the joint, and then ball of the left foot. We'll find that little hinge position. So send your hips back. Don't need a huge bend in the knee. You certainly don't need to be in the lowest lunge you've ever done. <laughs> One or both hands on something for support is recommended. Left leg is straight and that left leg sweeps up and out to the left and back around. Notice if as the leg sweeps, you're wanting to shift your pelvis. Try to hold it as 
steady as possible. So it takes a lot of stability work going on within this right side hip joint to do that. To make it less intense, stitch the band. To make it more intense, remove your hands from whatever you're using to balance. Oh, all right. Band comes around both arches. Squat, knee drive, squat, abduction. Right foot stays planted on the floor the whole time. Left will be doing the moving. Let's go. And to modify, you can always drop down to just one weight in this one or body weight only. I'd like you to keep the band because I want that abduction and hip flexor challenge, but you can ditch the weights as needed. Rest. Okay, ditch the band. Weights come down. Single leg deadlift to side lunge. So we got a little frontal plane, sagittal plane moving here. Spread out through those right toes, ground down through the right foot. Left leg is out of hover as you do that deadlift. To knee drive. Step your left foot out, side lunge. Pushing back up to that knee drive. When you go into the side lunge, don't round your back forward and hunch. So think hips back, hinge. Rest, weights come back to your shoulders. Lunge, curtsy, kick sweep. Right foot is forward, left foot is back. And that left foot will just kind of hop over to the right. Curtsy, kick sweep, curtsy, square it off. Staying low on that right leg as you move from the low curtsy to the low lunge. rest. Okay, take 30 seconds. Going through this just one more time. Don't mind me. I'm just double checking my mic. Mm, okay. <sighs> so band is going to be anchored around your left ankle, just above the ankle. Arch your right foot. Okay. Plant down through the left foot. Send the hips back one or both hands on something light for support. We're gonna send the right leg straight and that right leg sweeps up and out to the right and back. Don't have your hands on something so low that you're rounding forward, okay? Like this is borderline too low for me, but I didn't feel like dragging my stool over today, so it's gonna have to do. Like the, the arm of the couch that I use on the other side is more like the height you want, or just a wall. Reach those hips back, length through the waist. Woo, all right, band around both arches. I love that exercise, it is so tough though. <laughs> okay, so squat, knee drive, squat, abduction, left foot stays planted, right one's doing the fun stuff. 
Feet are wide enough apart that there's a little tension on the band at the bottom, okay? Don't take too narrow of a stance. As you come up, fire through the glutes, brace to the core. Okay, ditch the band. Deadlift, side lunge. Left foot is planted for the deadlift. Right leg will extend back at a hover for that single leg deadlift. Come up to your knee drive, and then the right foot steps out to the right for the side lunge. When you do the deadlift, you're not locked out through your left knee, okay? That's important. Ah, rest. All right, final exercise, and then you're done with circuit work. You know what we're doing? Curtsy, lunge, curtsy, kick sweep. Left foot planted, right foot goes back. Sorry if you can hear that car alarm going off outside my apartment building. Oh, and done. Awesome job. All right, you have a minute to recover. I'm going to show you what's coming up in our second and final Tabata. Band is gonna be around our thighs for this one, so challenge yourself. Go heavy if you're up for it, all right? First exercise, we are gonna use one weight. It's gonna be a banded squat jump. You're gonna press that weight out and in at the bottom. Squat jump, press it out and in. If you're uncomfortable jumping with the weight, you can do an air squat instead or ditch the weight and just do squat jumps. Second exercise is going to be squat jack, so staying fairly low, pushing against that band, in and out, in and out, okay? 20 on, 10 off. Oh, to modify the squat jumps, the squat jacks, you would just step side to side. I'll have modifications playing. Okay, 20 on, 10 off, eight times, let's do it. All right, our legs have their work cut out for them with this one. If you're using the band, I want it a few inches above your knees. If it's too much, ditch it. We're gonna grab that weight. If the weight's too much, so body weight only. I want you to challenge yourself, but never at the cost of proper form. Squat jump with that push at the bottom. Let's go. rest. Weight goes down. Squat jacks. So we stay fairly low for these, but when the feet jump into the middle, you come up a little bit. Let's go. When the feet jump in, you're on the balls of your feet. Whole foot plants down when you're wide. Rest. All right, grab that weight. First set done. Go. Squat. Push at the bottom. Squat jump. 
So there's a constant pressing out against the band of the thighs so that our knees are not bouncing inward. Oh, rest, weight down. All right, squat jacks. Out and in. Go. I'm bringing hand to floor, hand to floor. If reaching for the floor though causes you to round and hunch forward, then don't worry about actually touching the floor. Just think hips back, long spine. Rest. Okay, we're halfway there. Legs are talking to me. Grab that weight. And let's go. Weight down. Oh boy. <laughs> Three pushes to go. We can do it. Three intervals of work. Squat jacks. Oh, done. All right, final set. Final set, we can do it. Push out against the band, let's go. So I know I do these exercises a lot in Tabatas, but I'm telling you, a banded squat jump paired with a banded squat jack, it's just so effective. Oh, God. Okay. 20 seconds. Go. Oh man. Oh, okay. Now we are doing the original format of circuit and Tabata classes, which means you're not completely off the hook. We have a minute of work to go. We finish with a 60 second burpee challenge. Now, any form of burpees you want. If you want to go without the band and do chest to floor burpees, push up burpees, go for it. Since we've been using the band throughout class, so I am going to do a banded version of a burpee where instead of a push up at the bottom, I'm going to do two plank jacks and I'm going to jump my feet forward, squat jump, okay? So if you want to do that, we do need our band still around our thighs. Um, if you want to do a different version of burpee, go for it. If you are the competitive type, I want you to count how many reps you get in so that next time you take this class or do another one of these circuit and Tabata classes with a burpee finisher, you can try to beat or match your number. If you're not competitive, just try to go all 60 seconds moving, okay? I'll have a modification playing where we'll inchworm out and do the banded step. Also keep in mind, if you're doing a different version of a burpee than you normally do, your count, you know, it's not gonna be comparable. Okay, so if you're doing the same version as me, two plank jacks at the bottom, 60 seconds on the clock, count or don't count your rep number, up to you. Let's go.
done. Oh, I kind of lost count, but I think I was on my 13th, I think. Give or take one. Sorry, you had one job. <laughs> All right, ditch the band, awesome job. I'll bring you through a quick cool down. Ooh. All right, we can start with standing quad stretch. Shift your weight into one leg, grab the other foot in your hand, heel in the bum, drop your tailbone down. Shake it out, let's take it over to the other side. We'll get the backs of the legs now. So you're gonna plant one heel about six inches in front of the other or a foot in front of the other, hips distance apart. And then you're gonna glide those hips back. If you rest your hands on a thigh, rest it on the thigh of the bent knee. If you want more calf stretch, you can grab your foot. Coming up, let's switch sides. So after doing banded work, I like to get an outer hip stretch. So let's come to sit on the ground. You can take your left foot outside the right thigh, hug the knee into your chest, but anchor that left hip down towards the floor. It may lift a little bit off the floor, but think of sitting down into it. And let's switch sides. Hug the knee into your chest and then take that right hip and think of melting it down towards the ground. And then coming into a cross-legged position, let's get a stretch for the shoulders and the mid back. So I want you to tent your fingertips to either side. Let's start by taking our right arm and reaching it up and over into a side bend. And then from here, you're going to rotate your chest towards the floor and reach that right arm forward and down to the ground. And you're gonna stay in this twist. With every inhale, think of expanding your rib cage into the sides, that right side and your back. Now I want you to open the chest back up towards me and maybe even up towards the ceiling a little bit. And let's take it up and over, same thing other side. So the left arm reaches up, side, bend over. You're gonna rotate your chest towards the floor as you reach, 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 reach through that left arm. Reach it forward before lowering it down to the floor. And then just hold here and breathe. I want you to open your chest up towards me and maybe even a little up towards the ceiling. Let's come up through center and finish with one breath together. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, let it go. And that is your workout. Awesome job today. Thanks for working out with me and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.